Zach Moss. And I'm AJ Fenny. And this is Hippie Not Hippie. Morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to episode 19 of Hippie Not Hippie. Yeah! <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Oh, man, I'm doing great. I've been home for a while. I've actually slept more than five hours in a night. Yeah. I haven't been driving hundreds of miles a day. And man, With a drunk? The boredom is killing me. <laughs> How's the back? A uh, little sore. What's weird is, is like something about, I, I think either my couch, my bed, or the weight of Megan's head <laughs> is fucking my back up. <laughs> but man, on the road, driving a lot. I mean, I was still doing my yoga and, yeah. uh, and you know, a fair amount of walking, but yeah, something about Colorado fucks me up. Yeah. Couch cushions and head weight. Apparently it's just relaxing for an hour a day. That'll yeah. fucking, that'll fucking hurt yeah, me. Yeah. You can't so. chill. You can't slow down. You're like a shark. You got to keep moving. Yeah. Speaking of keeping moving, what, uh, what do you got going on oh, this week? Shark man. Buddy, shark man. Dun, 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 dun. I think that was Mario Brothers, but uh, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, not the game Shark Man that we all grew up playing. <laughs> oh, th- dude, did you ever hear that baby shark? Do 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 do. You ever get yeah. that stuck in your fucking head? No, uh, but maybe now. Okay, thank you. Uh, this week I'm excited. Uh, April first at uh, eight p.m. I will be doing this show called the Ha Ha Shop. It's their first show at the Ivy Wild Theater. Oh, the ha-ha shop. The ha-ha oh, yeah, shop. Where they just crank out. They got they, little they blue-collar workers yeah, just fucking just cranking machines out. machines of ha-ha's. ha-ha's. Just pounding ha's That's into right. other ha's. Yeah, ha's to ha's to ha's. But uh, I'm down there with Austin Brinker and Nina Davis. You can get all that information at www.funkylittletheater.org and uh, see all my upcoming dates at www.ajfinney.com. Uh, what do you got going on, Zach? Uh, April 1st, uh, the anniversary of my... Uh, Fool's Day? Yeah. Fool's Day. Um, no, my grandma died that day. Oh, God damn it. I feel like an <laughs> asshole. Look at that. I hope no. there was an April Fool's, but uh, there's not. She had a good sense of humor. She liked that. Uh, I will be at Liquid Art Winery and Estate in Kansas. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Wait, you said Liquid Art? Yeah, I think that some people that think they're trying to class up alcoholism. Wow. You know, they're like, it's hey, so- you're not drinking wine. You're drinking liquid yeah, art. Liquid art. It you sounds know? trippy. Yeah, man. So- and then uh, and then you said Kansas, and I was like, ah, oh, it kind of levels out. They're trying out there in that field. You yeah. Know? I mean, let's be honest. That winery probably is the coolest thing to be seen in a field for miles. Yeah. Uh, what part of Kansas? Do you know? It's outside of Topeka. It's- uh, Topeka! It's, it's in Manhattan, you know? Oh, so- dude. No, Manhattan is awesome. So I've been to Pittsburgh, Kansas. Yeah. I figure I should go to Manhattan. We I'm did. trying to go to all the uh, all the cities of Kansas yeah. that have the names of big cities. So we did Pitt State together, didn't we? On our way to Springfield. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Manhattan is super awesome, though. That's where Kansas State University is. Aggieville is like the the run where everyone drinks. Uh, one of the only blackout bar fights, apparently, that I got into. Someone drove me home, put me in my hotel room, tucked me in, and stole all the money out of my wallet. Fuck yeah. And then called the venue and told them I was a hand, or called the booker and told them I was a handful, which tells me it was someone that worked at the club. I'd been roofied. Thank God I stuck like $300 worth of merch money in my sock. That was all they didn't get. Wow, man. It was a real disaster. Roofied and robbed in Manhattan, Kansas. I can't wait. You're going to have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, uh, June 8th, I will be uh, headlining Comedy Works in Denver. Make sure and get those tickets for that. Yeah, that's that's the big one that's coming up. Yeah, we had a great time last week talking with... uh, Before we jump in, I do want to remind everyone, we are giving away two tickets. To Dead & Co. July 3rd for the last show that they'll play in Colorado. A handful of booms. And a handful of nug. Yeah, so... All you got to do is what? You just got to follow and subscribe. Follow, um, subscribe. Yeah, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Facebook. Tick a talk. Tick tock, you know, even though it might be banned, get on there. Tick our talk. Yeah, tick uh, our talk around. Yeah, lick our lock. Lick our lock. Tick our talk. Sure. Suck our, wait, I can't say that one. Yeah, you can. You can say suck our cock. <laughs> 
It's our own <laughs> podcast, AJ. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. <laughs> you're not you're not at REI right now. So. Re-re- so um All right. All right. Well, we had a great time talking with Hiker last week. Yeah. We realized we only got about halfway through the tour. We didn't get to figure out if he was a hippie or not. He's back in New York, but let's you know call what? his ass up. You, know you think they, he's awake? You know what they say? People in New York They are, never sleep. Well, they're and they're never they're never busy. <laughs> So, I mean, I think if we call him right now, we can probably just get him on the line. It's not like he's doing anything important. We should have just called a different hotline and be like, are you Brett? Dude. Hey. Oh, shit. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hike man. Are you busy? <laughs> it's Zachary. Are you pooping? <laughs> yeah. Are you really? Uh, I, was, I was waiting for Zach's call forever. He said fucking 30 minutes, like 45 minutes ago, and I just pulled him to poop. <laughs> Well, I mean, I figured when you were like, I have five people staying in my house. I don't know where I'm going to be able to talk. I do want to say this. Wherever you're at right now, uh, just be aware of any glass doors. (laughs) (laughs) Are we recording right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're live, baby. Oh, fuck. I fucking set up my whole, like, uh, computer to to record with a better mic, but we can do it like this. Okay. Oh, if you set up your whole computer to record with a better mic, we can do that once... uh, I think, how long have you already been in there? Five, got, ten? Yeah, you want out of here? You got a cliffhanger? About five. Hiker is a legendary yeah, shit maker. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, spend, he spends about two hours in the factory a day. Wow. Yeah. Willy Wonka. Hey, do you go dong in bowl or do you hang it over the seat? What? Is it? Wait, people hang it over the seat? Dude, I, I yeah, apparently. Uh, <laughs> you can do that? <laughs> I can't, but a guy I worked with, he goes, do you ever just drop it over the seat and then poop? And I'm like, so just pee on the floor? He goes, no, you got to have control. And I was like, you're a wizard. Yeah, sometimes I like yeah. the ability where if a little pee comes out, it's not a problem for me or my underwear. Right. Because, yeah, at that point. Holmberg used to do a joke about, like, do you think you could poop without peeing? I don't think you could. I don't think I could. You can number one without number two, but you can't number two without the number one. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, you if, know what? I, I, I have to number two each time I number one as well. Wait, you have to number two when you number one? <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm just <laughs> so not like <laughs> no, like when you said that, I was like, this makes <laughs> sense, like, actually. I was like, <laughs> I was like, because no matter how shitty the venue we're playing, you know, like we're there for 10 minutes and I'm like, where's Hiker? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, he's. Shitting. Yeah. He's doing a number three. He well, shit. that's that pre-show shit that like, you know, the nervous shit you take. Yeah. No, I don't. I no? don't have nervous poops. I, I am with Hiker on oh this one. Gosh. I do get those. Occasionally I get that rattled butterfly belly and you got to just, it's almost like it a pre-trip a shit. Changer. If, you have, if you have enough time to get one out before the show, it's like, holy shit, do I feel so much better? Yeah. See, that's, uh, that never happens for me. I have only pooped in a public bathroom about 12 or 13 times. Oh, my God. You're only a home field guy? I'm a home field man. Yeah, when I shit in public, oh. it is a fucking emergency. <laughs> I, I will say I wish that uh, probably at least half the shits I take are emergencies. That's uh, That probably says something about my diet. Yeah, it does. I mean- I'll shit in like a diviest dive bar, but there's a where we play hockey in the in the East Village in this park. The bathrooms there are the nastiest. They're one of the grossest bathrooms in New York. Do you do the hover? And, or you uh, sit down. No, I won't. I won't shit there at all. But like it was so nasty. This is, this is the, the perfect story to explain how gross it was. Uh, I went in there last season uh, to take a piss, you know, to pee in the urinal, and uh, there was three guys just openly shooting up heroin. <laughs> And while they were doing it, they were complaining about how gross the bathrooms were. <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible place to shoot up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were like, this place is nasty. Like, I was like, I don't even come in here unless I got a pair of Crocs. I won't, I won't come in here bare feet anymore. <laughs> Who's running around New York barefooted and shooting up? Junkies. Oh, dude, in, Tom- in Tompkins Square Park, there's a lot of barefoot people. Really? Yeah. I like that yeah, that's, sure. that bathroom is like when you know that you've hit rock bottom as a junkie, you're like, oh, God, we're shooting up in the fucking East Village right. public bathroom. Right. Like, where, where, how, how far have we fallen? Remember, right. we used to just break into them at construction <laughs> sites and shoot up in there, but. I do like the idea of hearing that at like, an, like a meeting where he's like, this is when I knew I had to turn my life around. Now I drive a school bus. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'll I'll take a shit in like the lion's lair, but I won't even touch the handle on the washer of the urinal. 
at Tompkins Square Park. That's how gross it is. Have you ever shit in a place where there's no door? Uh, yeah, but I hate the lion's it. lair has a curtain. The lion's lair has a curtain, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and makes you feel like you're pooping in the, in the shower. The drugs. Yeah, have you found stuff in the hole? Is that part of no, the fun of, of pooping have. at the lion's lair? As you root around in the wall hole? <laughs> <laughs> Roger Norquist uh, uh, always says, he's, he's like, I have found drugs in that hole on multiple occasions. Yeah, but one day you're going to find something you don't want. Yeah. <laughs> one out of three times, it's just a rat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is really gross. Uh, I I don't know why. Marciana knew someone, in, a girl in high school, because someone brought this up. And they go, do you ever, uh, have you ever shit in the shower? And I was like, no. And uh, this girl she knew used to shit in the shower and then smash it down the drain, and she called it waffle stomping. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she told me with a straight face, I was like, are you serious? Also, for some reason, I would assume a man would do that. I'm, you yeah. know, women are weird and secretive with their shit. I don't think we know what they do. No. It's you the know. head cheerleaders just, you want to do some waffle stomping? Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I, I actually when I was doing the, uh, the Rogue Island comedy fest, I think it's far enough that I can confess to this now. Okay. Uh, they put a they put a bunch of comics up in the same house. Yeah, it was a really cool house, like this kind of like nautical themed and stuff, and all these anchors and whatnot on the wall. This I think you were on house. a boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think, a floating house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I was taking a shower uh, uh, one morning, and uh, I think it was the last day I was there. And I thought I thought I could fart, you know? What oh I mean? no! I totally sharded it. I sharded in the shower like bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it was just like, like, like when I did it, I was like, oh my god, oh my god! And I looked down, and it was just kind of like I didn't have to waffle stomp, but like, <laughs> I was, I wasn't far from that. You know what I mean? It was close to that, and there was like a, there was like one of those like, like rubber mats so you don't slip in the shower, and so like that. It was getting caught in that, so I had to like peel that up, and then of course I just stayed in there and just cleaned the shower afterwards before I came out. But like I just thought about it, like how like it sounded for anyone that might have been in the living room, which was just like a loud fart, and then me going, "Oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> no, Are you serious, oh my god," and then of course the sound of a bunch of suction cups <laughs> coming up as I peel that mat up. <laughs> <laughs> And then me just still muttering, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then, of course, the sound of, like, a spray bottle and <laughs> me still muttering. <laughs> yeah, and then you walking out and people going, hey, are you good? And you're like, yeah, everything's fine. There was no – thankfully, there was no one there when I walked out. But they may have chosen to leave. <laughs> yeah, they're like the – because we need to confront him because he either – Sharded in the shower or fucked an octopus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh fuck. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, man. I feel like last time uh when you were here, where did we we made it about to Atlanta? But but you guys didn't really talk uh, about yeah, Atlanta. Well, I, looking at the list. I I also like was like thinking of stuff that we like neglected to mention the last episode too. Like a few of the stories we left out some key details. Yeah. Uh, the main one being uh I was telling our friend Steve Vanderplug about Zach falling through the shower door. Classic. And, uh, <laughs> when I Classic. showed the picture, he's like, there's not glass everywhere. And I was like, oh, right. Well, Zach started off by just scooping up all the broken glass and throwing it in the toilet and breaking what? the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that toilet is fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, they probably, yeah. that was part of the mystery. They're probably like, how did all the glass get in the toilet? Oh, you didn't flush yeah. it. You just put it <laughs> in really there. No, the we put it in there. There's still a little teepee and a little peepee in there. <laughs> I love it. In your yeah, drunken stupor, was. you're That's just like, part two. this is a safe place for the glass to lay. Also, I don't know. I've had chunkier shits than that glass that I threw in there. Yeah, but shit's going to break down. Doesn't... Yeah, yeah. The glass is not going to break down. You you eat enough fiber, Zach, that, that your shit's yeah. <laughs> pretty valuable. <laughs> yeah. I need did. more fiber. Looks like you're shitting glass. You know, I, in my defense, <laughs> by the time I realized that there was glass in the toilet, I was still – I did that in the blackout still. So, you know, in my defense, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't remember putting all uh, that glass in the toilet, 
But man, I, there's probably a real I panic drunk put, Zach, his brain not working very well. Yeah. Part of me wonders yeah. too if when the door exploded, maybe a bunch bounced in there. I, or the if thing, drunk Zach was I like witness you. I what I think happened, and this is only going off of the things that I used to do when I got fucking loaded, I would come out of a blackout to those moments of clarity, and you would just have this feeling of like, oh, I've been a bad boy. I gotta clean this up real quick. <laughs> yeah. See, I <laughs> I didn't, I was still being a, I was like, oh, you're a bad boy. You need to clean this up before I even came to. So that's how bad it was is that blackout Zach even knew that he had fucked up. <laughs> I like, I just like the fact you're like, I'm a bad boy. And then you're like, I'm going to snuggle up with my brother and maybe he'll, he'll protect me. <laughs> so I have been talking to some people about this and I have a friend who used to work for insurance claims for Aflac. Yeah. And he said that about 10% of the claims for Aflac are exploding glass shower doors. 10%? He said really? about 10% of the claims. He's like, it's very common. He's like, glass shower doors are very dangerous. <gasps> well, yeah, but why is it only happening and- in the hotels that you travel in? <laughs> 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 well, here's what else he told me that I found interesting. He's like, yeah, one time we had a woman who was giving labor in the bathtub and... You know how how we discovered that they randomly explode between three and six in the morning? Yeah, yeah she was fucking yeah. pushing a baby out at three thirty in the morning and the fucking shower door just exploded all over, cut her up and the baby. Can you imagine birthing a baby in that pile of glass? I can't no. imagine birthing no. a baby. It's a tough baby. It's like t- <laughs> It's like Tom Poe from Bloodsport, you know, where he rolls his knuckles in the glass. Yeah, yeah, and the glue in the glass. Yeah. Yeah. They Basically, that yeah. baby came out covered in placenta. They fucking rolled him in the glass, and then they made him fight another baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they're doing abortions in the South now. <laughs> there can be only one. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, well, yeah, you know, 311 and 314 it's, at 6 a.m., yeah, it's fine. Well, and they each get a gun because it's fine. <laughs> it's fine if they die it's like out. men. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the South, yeah. sad place. But um. But we will not put sleeves on our babies. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is a, a detail of that. Um, what else, hiker? Uh, well, the other detail which uh, Zach brought up right where we recorded last time was, uh, you know, you're telling stories about the. Uh, uh, the idiot kids sitting in the booth behind us at that terrible restaurant in Savannah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh yeah. But you're like, I didn't mention they were. One of them was mad he couldn't set fires in the street anymore or something. What? Like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So one of the kids goes. He's like, man, it's crazy being 18 now. Like that we can just like go to prison. You know, when I like I used to just be able to go out and start fires in the middle of the street. <laughs> and like, if I got in trouble, you know. It's no big deal. But now if I go, you know, start fires in the middle, of, I'm an arsonist. What a, it's, such a, <laughs> it's such a weird thing to think that that, that activity is putting your childish ways behind you. Well, yeah. And then the same kid that was like, by the way, you can't just fire guns at the fence with your neighbors on the other side of it to kill squirrels. That kid goes, wasn't that kid moving to Alaska well, th- dude, th- I think it was all the one kid that was real dumb and his like, luckily there was one, you know, friend there that maybe had a fucking hundred IQ or something. And he was like, uh, yeah, he goes, so are you really starting a lot of fires in the streets these days? <laughs> <laughs> and the kid goes, nah, but you know, if I want to, <laughs> you know, it'd be nice to be able to go do it. You know, like say I come back from Alaska. By the way, this kid thought that just the act of traveling to Alaska would make him grow a beard. Oh, that's right. But <laughs> but after I get back from Alaska with my beard, what if I want to celebrate by starting a fire in the street? <laughs> I wish somebody would have gone, yeah, but if you start a fire in the street and you got that big old beard, you're just going to burn your beard off. <laughs> and you ain't in Alaska no more. You know those follicles aren't coming through, Randy. What are you thinking? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll just, just go to work at the truck stop. Then I'll just have to take my 22 and put it in my mouth fence and shoot <laughs> shoot my brain squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that got, that got fucking dark. And right after that, it's just like, uh, who had the waffle and omelet? Chance. 
Well, this guy's beard doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the idea of him getting a tattoo of a fire in an intersection. And then what? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I was trying to think of like cool stuff that happened in Atlanta, but really uh, Bert spent most of the time in Atlanta on the phone trying to, trying oh. to still stay in his house. Yeah. Oh. I, was, I was talking to my lawyer most of the time. Oh, about uh, your place in New York? That's, that's not fun podcast talk. No. <laughs> no, it's just me reliving like, God damn it, I remember that day that Bert talked on the phone for six hours and I had to eat Szechuan-style green beans alone. Uh, sounds like a <laughs> sorry, sad, buddy. lonely picnic. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to eat these together. Yeah, no. I brought... No, I, I, the highlight of Atlanta was, was definitely the video of the girl pissing herself on stage at the, the mic the night before oh, we were at the laughing yeah. school. That still blows my mind. Yeah, no, it was uh, yeah. it was impressive, <clears throat> and man, I feel like they should go to the two minute thing that Comedy Works has for newbies, because <laughs> yeah. I felt like that woman got way yeah. too long of a set. <laughs> well, after after you yeah. pee yourself, you kind of go, well, I guess we'll give her a little bit more. She's risked everything. Well, <laughs> yeah, maybe you know. I mean, if there's any lights in the house that are going to be able to dry off that splatter. It's the stage lights. I went, when I first moved to New York, I went to an open mic where this girl got on stage. It was at an improv theater. So at first I thought she was doing an improv bit because she started like pacing around the stage and not using the mic at all. And she was screaming about like precinct, whatever, like some, oh. some police precinct. Was she just crazy? And then she starts taking her, she starts taking her clothes off and the whole crowd just groans like she's done it before. Cougar Carroll works New York too? I know, right? <laughs> Once she got completely naked, she goes, you don't think I'll do it? You don't think I'll take my clothes off? Which was really weird, like tiny for her to say, because she was already naked. Right. Uh, and she's completely butt naked at this point. And then Whoa. she sits down on the stage. And it's like a theater. And she like sits down, literally points her vagina like at the crowd, like, like rolls back on her shoulders. Then she reaches in her purse and pulls out two pictures of her kids. Oh, no. And she holds them next to her vagina and goes... Uh, these are my kids. They came out of this hole. Jesus and no Christ. one's going to take them away from me. Not you or not Precinct 5. No one. <laughs> and then and then they gave her the light and she immediately wrapped it up and like grabbed all her clothes and walked off stage. And, Dude, uh, I appreciate the fact the they let her do like that. that still, yeah, that still adheres to the light. Uh, well, then it was, it was in the pit. Which Were they like cute kids? That, like this... <laughs> <laughs> I, remember. <laughs> I, I remember what a vagina looked like, it looked like. Uh, was it a cute vagina <laughs> yeah well then the, the wildest part was that like so it was in the pit and the pit has like uh like yeah the vagina shows. usually is in the pit yeah sorry <laughs> the people's improv theater okay there's three or four showrooms and then uh so there's a big the other, like at the, at the, if you've never been to the pit uh, there was a giant mural of Chris Farley overlooking all of this. Oh happening. my god! So it's a giant mural of Chris Farley, and then just a naked woman, spread eagle, going, "This is where my kids came from." And then they get the light, and she's like, yeah. "Well, that's my art piece." Yep. <laughs> Fat guy oh, in a little, little shiner. <laughs> shiner. <laughs> in a little cut. <laughs> oh Jesus! She was like the. Uh, she was like the, I don't know, like the third or fourth comic up in like a mic of like you know, 30 comics. And then at the very end of the mic, a comic got up and he's like, hey, I just did a mic uh, in like in the in the tiny room, the, the attic upstairs. And uh, you would not believe what just happened. And then he told the exact story of her doing <laughs> Wait, so this is, the whole fucking thing again. So she's working this out. No, he, was, out. he just made it. For, he made a joke about it. Right. Or did he she go do it upstairs? No, she went and did it upstairs too. This is not Dude, a joke. That's, it's like that's what did the comic say mind. after that? Well, here's I didn't know at the time, but apparently she was she was the scenes Cougar Carol. She was known for doing this. Wow. Uh I went to a show the other day where like people were talk were talking about it and uh and they're like, Oh remember I forget what her name was, like who used to get naked on stage and they're like, Oh yeah, I remember her. And uh and they're like, Yeah, oh her poor kids. <laughs> I think they got taken away. <laughs> Whoa. Was there a woman yeah. here that used to dress up in like a cowboy outfit and blow bubbles? Do you? Oh, Miss Bubbles? Yeah. So that was here. I couldn't remember where that was. <laughs> I tried to explain that to someone and they were like, 
We think you're having a flashback. There's no way that happened. Yeah, I think that's Mrs. Mrs. Denver? Bubbles. Uh, I have only seen Miss Bubbles, I think, on a flyer. I think I worked with Miss Bubbles maybe once, but I had to leave or I blacked out the oh, act. I remember work. I think I actually worked with her twice since I've been here. And I, I thought she had a bubble gun, but now I recall she had a bubble machine that they would plug in and it would just... I don't remember any of the act except just going, what is happening? That sounds, you know, interesting. Also, are you still off porn, AJ? Are you still Googling chicks in bikinis? I'm not Googling chicks in bikinis. Mostly off porn. (laughs) (laughs) Because as soon as, as soon as Brett was like, this woman started taking her clothes off. (laughs) She got her pussy out. Like AJ was like fucking like, what? Oh my God. Tell me more. Tell me more. Her kids, her kids next to her pussy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It just, (laughs) you just saw my curls straighten. Yeah. He got, he got so fucking excited. His face lit up when he's like, what? This is like, this is almost like porn, but not porn. I can, this is okay. AJ's hair went straight and Zach's hair went curly. Yeah. Yep. And we're both hard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we're both going to have to pee on the outside today. <laughs> yeah. Or poop, Laying it out over. With, the... Poop with it on top. Yeah. yeah. Poop, poop with it out, outside the bowl. So, yeah. Atlanta was great. Uh, now, did you go from Atlanta? You guys then went to Wichita? Or was no. there someplace else? We went to uh, Nashville. We didn't. I don't. Did you guys Nashville. talk about Nashville? Well, we didn't have a show. We didn't have a show in Nashville. So, in Nashville, we hung out with my buddy, uh, Robbie Peoples. Okay. Uh, he's a. Uh, Great uh, blues musician, old friend of mine who we used to play music with. And Did man, you explore the town? Yeah, so we went to his barbecue spot that that he uh, that he works at and got some they some really great. I think it was one of my favorite meals of the tour. Okay, just a bunch of brisket, some Nashville hot chicken, and then they gave us every single side on the menu. Oh yeah, real homey hookup. It was fucking great. And then uh, we ate. Next to the guitar player from Meatloaf, <laughs> from 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 uh, I think ninety nine to two thousand three. Did he tell you who he was? Uh, oh yeah, he brought up. He's like, yeah, no, I wasn't like, hey, are you the guitar? Are you the guitarist for Meatloaf? I am. Well, because everybody in Nashville is a musician, so the bartender and him start talking about playing. I'm like, oh yeah, you play what what band you used to play in or whatever, and he's like, I used to be Meatloaf's guitarist. And uh, this guy was really – so the thing about Nashville is everyone in Nashville is a fucking musician. And yeah. who do musicians think is fucking cool? Meatloaf? Comedians. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, like every person I talk to, they'd, they'd be like, I'm a guitarist or I'm a bassist or I'm a singer or I'm a songwriter. I'd be like, I'm a comedian. They'd be like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like, I was told by a guy one time – and it was crazy. He said that every bass player in every band wanted to be a comedian. <laughs> like that's what this dude from a from a band told me one time. Yeah, I mean, I think most guitar players too. I mean, there's just the the old thing about musicians wanting to be comedians and comedians wanting to be musicians and it's like we're both entertainers that don't do the same thing so we can have a little bit of like oh this person's cool because of what they yeah. do or whatever, you know? Yeah, so we hung out with Meatloaf's guitarist, uh, <laughs> 99 to 2003, and he... and uh, He gave you the credentials he was there in case you well, wanted no, to Well, no, we, we asked him what, what years, because he, he was a little bit of a younger guy where we're like... He Hiker a, immediately goes, he goes, oh, a, the, the Fight Club years, because... Oh, yeah, Bob with Bitch Tits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, yeah, you know, when we were on that tour those years, he's like, yeah, everybody in the band, we just go up and start grabbing his tits and calling him Bob with Bitch Tits. <laughs> yeah, so. I just like the fact that you're like, yeah, I was a guitarist for uh, Meatloaf. And you're like, you're kind of young. And he goes, yeah, they used to call me Baby Meat. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call me Meat Slice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Just the seasoning. But uh, he goes, yeah, Meatloaf and I were going to cut a new record, but you know, he died of COVID. <laughs> He's like, that kind of fucked things up. <laughs> Cause so, yeah, man, if you're like, you're not, there's not like after meatloaf dies, nobody's like, man, let's go see band of meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like if Bob Dylan died, you still went and saw the band. Well, yeah, they were they were the band though, right? You know, they they put out their own records and stuff. But yeah. meat's dead. But we're going to see the loaf. <laughs> yeah, 
Just called, yeah, bread loaf. <laughs> bread loaf. <laughs> <laughs> just oatmeal crumble. At some point, he hands you a card, and he goes, yeah, I used to play for meatloaf. Uh, I'm available if you guys need a backup guitarist. Yeah, then we just spent the rest of the night. We went to some wood grain bars that were fucking great. What do you mean wood grain bar? Uh, where the, like wooden the walls, floor? The walls are made of wood. That's a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this I was near. It's pretty damn close to being a trailer. Really, a lot of bars had a feeling like they had been nailed together. Was it real wood or like wood paneling? It wasn't wood paneling. It was like wood planks. Okay, like cedar wood. It looked like, you know, like what? How you imagine they would build a cabin? Okay, a hundred years ago, maybe. I also, you know. Was drinking very heavily on this night, so I don't know. The wood's a little grainy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> grainy. But then we went to uh, then we went to fucking the D note. Is that what it was called, Bert? Is this a rock venue? Uh, D notes. D nose or D note? The D note. No, it was called D notes. Like uh, oh like D notes. Oh D no dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, wasn't that uh, one of the God, that the Italian guy that used to do the singing with uh, Frank Sinatra? They called him Dino. Dean Martin? Dean Martin, yeah. They called him Dino? Yeah. All right. Uh, this place, Dino's, I like how Brett's I, like, I, I that upsets me. <laughs> 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 I insisted we go there because the last time I was in Nashville, uh, I'll just tell a story real quickly, which is I was, uh, my girlfriend at the time was going to a, a gay wedding. He says and that she was about like, you want to come with? And I was like, sure. And I, but I, I was like, I'm going to book a show beforehand. And I might miss the ceremony. And then she was like, good. The groom said, you can't come to the ceremony anyway. You can only what? come to the reception. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> and so I did a, I did a show. And I think it was called the East Room. But I did it in, like, in my wedding clothes. <laughs> and then I get out. And uh, I, just got, I, just, I, just, I finished the show. And there's a text from, uh, from my lady friend that says, uh, I'm, I don't want to tell you this, but the groom's being a real groomzilla. And you can't come to the reception now either. Oh my god! And I was like, "Oh fuck! All right." And so I just like started just. I was like, "I guess I'll just go bar hopping in uh, in East Nashville." So I was bar hopping in like wedding clothes. People kept like, <laughs> asking me like what my deal was and what I was where I was coming from. And then I met these guys at this place called Dino's, which which uh, serves eggs in a hole. Which, what? Uh, what like, are eggs kind of like in a, a hole? It's almost like a bodega, like a shorter grill. It's the opposite of that woman's hat. performance in New York. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that was eggs, eggs out, out of the hole. <laughs> It's like, it's like a slice of bread with a hole cut in the middle and then you fried egg inside of it. Oh, is it so is it uh, uncooked bread or is it like toast? It's like toast. Okay. Do they give you the bread but hole? In a, yeah, yeah. And like I've never seen that it's like such like a weird <laughs> it's a thing you make for yourself, but I've never seen it in a restaurant before, so I thought that was very unique. Wow. When we were watching like a Nashville Predators playoff game and uh you know, and I started like talking to people at the bar and they were like, Hey, do you want to go smoke weed on the roof? And I was like, Sure. And so they brought me up to the roof. And we're smoking weed. And then one of them made a joke about how, about one of them having a Grammy. And I was like, wait a minute, one of you guys has a Grammy? And they're, he's like, oh yeah, uh, two of us are in the, are in the band Jars of Clay. Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Which for those of you that don't know, it's one of the premier Christian bands of the nineties that had one mainstream hit. How does it go? <laughs> God, I don't remember. Oh, it's like, oh man, how does it go? Dust and water. I don't know. No, that, I think that's Toad the Wet yeah, Sprocket. Let's find it's like, out. Uh, and if God will rain for 40 days. Oh, and yeah. Something, and something in the passive waves. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, was, it was a running gag in the, in the first episode of Crashing. They kept, uh, oh. <laughs> they kept playing that song because. <laughs> yeah, it's like, is flood. it Flood? 40 days and 40 nights. It kind of. Yeah, it's rain, rain on my yeah. face. It hasn't stopped raining for days. But if I can't swim after 40, 40 days, days in my mind is crushed by the crashing waves, with me up so hot that I cannot fall. Lift me up, lift me up when I'm falling. Jars of clay, everybody. This is amazing. <laughs> Performed by the devil. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, they were smoking weed on the roof. They That's maybe they crazy. were the devil. They were lying. Ah, yeah. oh, loser. Would, they had fallen. I would love to see that infomercial. It's just all all your favorite Christian songs performed by Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Co- covered by Satan. Yeah. It's just what was that? MXPX. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The only one I can remember is that they With go arms wide open. Yeah. <laughs> Everything by. Creed. Creed. 
<laughs> Joseph! Well, that's, so, but Dino's, you would recommend someone going to Dino's. Oh my God, would I had a heartbeat. I, I, you loved it, right, Zach? Yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, it, it's it's it, a bar with like a short order grill. The kind of grill you'd see in a bodega. But okay. it, it feels like you're in like two airstreams that were like fucking smashed together. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, right? Yeah, it's got like a lounge feel to it. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, and it's very small. So, I don't know. Yeah. So, Dino's no shows. Cool. So, just one night in Nashville? Just one night in Nashville just to break up the night. long ass drive to, I mean, what was it? Nashville to Arkansas the next day was eight hours, I think. Were you in yeah. Fayetteville? We were north of Fayetteville, Fayetteville. in a place well, called Springdale. Oh, God. Dude. Apparently, were you guys Fayetteville near? Fayetteville kind of like a Dallas Fort Worth quad city situation where there's yeah. like three towns that all butt up next to each other. Were you guys near Bentonville? Did, we did, they, were, did they tell you to go to yeah. Crystal Bridges? No. Bet- <sighs> Bentonville's one of the towns, I believe. Okay. The next time you guys are in that area, you have to go to Crystal Bridges. It's an amazing art museum that uh, has the actual George Washington painting that was used for the dollar bill. And it was all designed by, I think, one of the eccentric Waltons and just refused to to charge people to go in. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, the real Washington, huh. the, f- the first. The first. Washington. First Washington, first bill guy. On the dollar bill. On the dollar bill. Dollar bill, man. We missed it, Bert. That's all right. It'll be there. The fuck, man. We got to go back. <laughs> we, you got to talk to your we travel agent. We, we never even ate beignets in uh, in New Orleans. Yeah. I don't even know what a beignet is. That's like the... It's a donut. It's like a sopapilla, kind of. Oh, fuck. I love donuts. But, uh, yeah, they're pretty good. So, yeah. All right. And then, so you went to Arkansas. How was the show in Arkansas? The show in we, Arkansas. We played a was, cidery. Yeah. A cidery? Hard cider? Yeah. Yeah, which man, if you yeah. want to see, yeah. if you want to see sad Bert, oh no, put him in a place with no beer. Put him in a bar with no beer and no booze, man. Put him in a place with just apple juice that gets you drunk. I'm in a room without beer right now, and I'm pretty depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then from Arkansas, you guys but, went to Wichita. Yeah, no. Well, so we're leaving we're, Arkansas, yeah. and I think we talked about this on the last one because we're staying at uh, Stetson's place, and he lives above. A tractor repair shop, and yeah, we talked about this. My oh, wheel almost came off. Yeah, because they didn't tighten the lug nuts, right? We went and crashed there. They were the fucking best. When and you said then, crash, you slept there. You didn't crash the car. Yeah, the car could have crashed though. Yeah, if fucking fucking Les Schwab. I'm coming for you, Les Schwab. I'm fucking coming for you. With arms wide open. With arms wide open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then we went to Kansas City. Oh, yeah, I forgot you went to KC. Yeah, well, I was going to say, in, in Fayetteville, we did a thing that we kind of did similar in, in South Carolina, which is I told them to, like, bring me a shot of their strongest cider each time I tell a joke that, that misses, uh, that bombs, <laughs> yeah. punchline misses. And we were doing that in uh, in in Charleston, too, which we're, I was just, we were at the brewery, and I was like, bring me a shot of the strongest beer each time I tell a joke that doesn't go over. And so then me and Zach just started bringing each other shots of beer whenever, like, <laughs> well, I would do it, too, for <laughs> whenever. Sometimes Zach would tell a joke that worked, but just, just I just didn't care for the joke. So I <laughs> started making up my own rules. Yeah, no, and uh, yeah, Bert was up there, and I killed so hard. There's no need to bring me any drinks. And uh, <laughs> but Bert, the, the Bert, was up, door. Bert was up there. He had one that really just uh, he really lost the whole room. And he's like Zach, Zach, I need cider. Uh, you dropped a super stinker. I need cider. Yeah. So I oh, uh, yeah. and I the cider <laughs> ladies were busy. I just brought him my warm cider that I didn't want to drink. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and he didn't drink it. And then I got I him no fresh idea. cider. And then he, so I think at the end of the show, I had brought him like three ciders. And I think they were all still sitting there because he didn't want to drink. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Did the I, cider was good. Yeah. Was if bad. you like cider, it wasn't, it's just that Bert was like talking about, he's like, I wonder if I can, uh, you know, like bring in a water cup with bush light in it. I, uh, <laughs> Dude, dropping stinkers on stage sucks, but it's, it's even weirder when it's like a, you know, like a 90% joke that hits everywhere, but for some reason regionally, they just decide they don't like it because then you're just massively yeah. confused. Yeah. And I started like the, you know, the, the first part of my set crushed and the, 
be i i closed real, real well too and just like i just had a long bit in the middle that was to dead silence Ugh. and it was this new but, joke that yeah it, it was doing t- well and that was in arkansas yeah it was it was, it, it was like my hottest joke and, dude uh, i don't know if i line. i don't know if i've told this story on uh on the podcast yet but i was in a, doing this triple feature thing in fayetteville one time and i have like a a seven minute long story that was crushing. Uh, usually I'd close with it, but tonight I was like, I'm going to open with it and just get them on my side. The guy in front of me just destroyed. I went up, started going into this long form thing and probably about 90 seconds into it. I realized they're not into it, but there's no way for me to get out yeah. without failing. So I pushed the whole thing and the joke yeah. ends by me just going, that's because you're living your life wrong. And it's this whole, huge callback. And even if they don't like enjoy the laughter, they usually see the writing structure and go, okay, I did that to a sold out room of nothing. And a guy who was wearing my t-shirt from the last time I was there stood up, took his hat off and then went, that's just a long way to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I still have like 13 minutes. Also, you know what I've learned for the record? If you are doing a long joke and people don't like it and, and comics are like, there's just no way out of it. There's totally way out of it. You can just stop and you can be like, and you can be like, oh man, you guys fucking hate this. Let's try something else. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The audience will appreciate it. You will appreciate it. Like at any point in time during your set, you can be like, whoa. Fuck yeah! Dude, I think this was. Let t- me try something else. 2014. Did it, your next joke get him, or did or I kind of got? I it caused a lot of. I mean, I only had you, 25 minutes. It was going to be wonky. You and only I mean, had 25 minutes. So yeah, the first seven. You so you had. You know that's a long time to win them back. It that's, is, but they already hated me. Minutes. And, it, and they're, the audience is aware that it's a contest. That each person doing 25 minutes has the potential to come back and headline. So they had already decided. No, nope, guy in front of you is our guy. Oh wow! So, yeah, they man, it, word it that way. What a dumb way to word the fucking show. A, like that's a shit show because then it does make the audience feel like they have to be selective with their right. laughter. And the first person does have an the first and the last person have an advantage. Yeah, and the middle person is going to get fucked. Well, it's also what ends up happening is sometimes the person opening explains that, or they'll do it on the god mic, which I just go, hey. They, a few of the clubs have done it where they're like, hey, we've got a triple feature tonight. All these people uh, are headlining everywhere else on the road. We just don't have a roster to put them. So we wanted to slam them together for a really good show. Um, and they'll do it that way. And that's great because they feel like everyone's equal. Uh, but when it turns into a competition, dude, it just sucks. You're also sharing a condo. It can be a real disaster. Oh, wow. So then you had to go sleep next to these guys. Yeah, dude. It's one bed. One twin bed. We're just stacked on top of each other like like locks. <laughs> Winner gets top. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm the bottom again. But a power. I'm a power bottom. So then we go to Kansas City. We cross the border into Missouri. And holy shit. It's St. Patrick's Day. Oh, dude. It's a... It's a it's you weren't a, there during the parade, were you? Uh, we were, but we didn't go to attend. But uh, we drive into town... Missouri, weed is legal. Uh, open containers are legal, or was that Arkansas? Uh, I think <clears> – God, I can't remember. You, could, you can't be driving, but I think the passenger can be drinking. So for the first time, our car <laughs> is legal. <laughs> I'm driving a few miles over the speed limit. I feel free. Yeah. Lug nuts are tight, Dude, drivers are loose. I never thought that like driving into Missouri, this huge weight of Southern oppression would be lifted off yeah. of my sh- shoulders, you know, but it was, it was great. Steven Taylor hooked us up with a, uh, you know him? Yeah. Yeah. He hooked us up with a, with a sweet hotel. Nice. And then we, we went and did the show, uh, Cassie who, who ran the show, all the comics, it was a really great show, I thought. It reminded me of like a Denver brewery show. Nice. It's in the back room of a brewery, well, and there, there's an insane amount of space behind you, which means that it can grow into a massive fucking show yeah. eventually. What were you saying, Brett? Our first show got canceled. Oh, yeah. Due to St. Patty's Day? Yeah, yeah we, had, we had like a uh, like a five o'clock show on St. Patty's Day to, to, uh, in a theater, and we just couldn't sell tickets. Dude, that, I'm going to tell you this. The, the Kansas City St. Patrick's Day parade is dangerous. 
100%. Like people lose their mind and you would go down there and drink and just have fun. But I mean, people do not think a guy threw a full beer one time and it just crossed, came out of nowhere and nearly hit a baby. Like it was just, you just watch the beer hit, shake. And it's just like, oh, these people have, there's nothing. Yeah. Not a care in the world. Also, you know, they're trying to figure out different ways to do abortions down there now. Yeah. <laughs> Or maybe they, maybe they thought it was a leprechaun. Actually, I think Missouri's still legal, right? Uh, Are they like weed? You can, you can smoke weed. You can drink in your car, but nope. No, it was debatable. Yeah, they were they were yeah. going to uh, actually incarcerate someone. Oh wow, God. So yeah. Um, All right, Kansas City was great. Well, we went and uh, we met up with an old buddy of ours, uh, Ben Adams. Okay. Who uh, used to do comedy, and uh, but he gave it up to have seventeen kids. <laughs> Whoa! You lower those numbers if you go to the St. Patrick's Day parade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's uh, why you have so many kids in Kansas City because you you lose so much on St. Patty's. Right, day. right. We know we're going to lose five of them at the parade. No, Ben and I kind of started around the same time, and we we went out and hung out. And yeah, man, ten years ago he didn't have any kids at all. He was just a single man. <laughs> okay. So then him and Nicole married. He became the stepdad to two kids. And N Nicole was a very good comic from Denver, too. Yeah, Nicole's super funny. And uh, Wait yeah. a minute. I think I met them. Nicole McCormick and Ben yes. Adams. Yes. Yeah. Right, like clean cut guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do remember him. He has glasses and dark hair. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they had a kid. And then- uh, The kid had a kid and it just, they got it wet? Well, no. Their kid, uh, Teddy, I think he's like seven- Okay. And then uh, they, she had some kids already, the two stepkids. Her, his stepdaughter had a kid. Uh, like, so he's a grandpa now. Whoa. And then they moved into this, into the house that they live in. And then her sister also moved in and they have a dog and a cat. Yeah. He seemed like he was uh, really happy to be out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, we had a fucking blast. It was fun hanging out. And then we went to Wichita the next day. And I wouldn't have thought this, but man, out of all the cities we went to, Wichita has the like strictest laws on weed and shit like that. And everybody there was fucking acted. It reminded me of like good old Colorado days. Yeah. Because what a lot of people don't realize is once yeah, weed was legalized Colorado. here in Colorado, all these places started telling you you couldn't do it there. Yeah. Once it was legal, when it was illegal, it was like, oh, they're being bad. I don't know if we should talk to them or whatever. Yeah. Like, I used to smoke joints and concerts and shit and not have any problems. And the first time I tried to smoke a joint after weed was legalized, the security guard was immediately on me like, you can't do that in here. Yeah. I'm like, what? We can't smoke weed in concerts now that it's legal? Like, what the fuck is happening? Wichita is the first place I ever saw a peyote garden. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. I thought Wichita was a cool fucking city, man. I had a good time there. Yeah, it's fun. The Looney Bang Club they had there is actually a lot of fun, too. It's downtown, so you can kind of meander around. It was a wild show in that we got there crazy early, and people just kept buying us drinks. Wow. Was it a brewery? No, it was It was a, It was was an Irish bar that was, that was kind of like having a, a St. Paddy's hangover. Oh, wow. What and, a perfect uh, setup. Yeah, it was called the Sham yeah, was Show at the Shamrock Bar nice. the day after St. Yeah. Patty's, and they had a they had a uh, food window, a food hole out back that only served biscuits and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty loaded. Soak them up. Yeah, so we did. I ate a fair amount of biscuits and gravy and a and a pizza, but that show ended Wait, up. Wait, where'd you get the yeah. pizza? Uh, out of the the, the other, other hole? food hole. Yeah, they had two food holes, I guess. Uh, they, they, they had frozen pizza from behind the bar. Oh, gotcha. And then, yeah, what was the host's name? Felix Johnson was his name. Yeah. Felix Johnson. No, all the comics there were, I thought were really funny. And it was like a fucking rowdy ass bar crowd where there's like madness going on in parts of the room. And uh, they all held their own. They all wrangled it. Yeah. yeah. They, I felt like it was like. You know, it's one of those things where if you don't know the comics, you're like, man, this show could be really bad. And they all did a really good job. Uh, Jeremy Rush was on the show, too. He's, yeah. Aaron Han. Yeah. Well, it reminds Maggie, me of, it's uh, Welch, weird. Yeah, they were fucking Kansas great. City used to have this club called Stanford's. And uh, I Sam Talent came down and opened for me one time. And they used to do Wednesday, Thursday was free beer night. And it was 
un, mm-hmm. unbelievable why they did it. I mean, you would see towers of red solo cups yeah. and they were just drinking keg beer. There were times where the club would come out and go, cut it short. We're out of beer. They're going to lose their minds. Yeah. And so you paid one price, you got a wristband, and then you just drank. And your job was to try to sort it out for two days. Wow. But uh, yeah, Sam had gone down and experienced it. It was absolutely the wrong way to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, fucking sounds like it. Holy shit. But yeah, then I felt bad because we didn't expect to party as hard as we did in wichita like it ended up being like one of the latest nights i think of the entire wow. tour was that the last d- leg of the tour it was the last night and wow. uh we there was this nice guy well, I also mentioned too like that uh in kansas city uh we are I won't, I won't i won't name names but we were uh we were gifted an insane amount of mushrooms oh wow uh when we left it, like the, the amount that like if we're like fuck if we get pulled over in kansas with this yeah we're in we'll trouble. go to jail for like decades yeah he gave us like two like, ounces was, of mushrooms it's just too much to eat at a time i i think more like four out four ounces of mushrooms but wow still yeah and so we were totally panicked about that so i just started giving away in wichita as much as i could so yeah brett was the <laughs> somehow get mushroom fairy of wichita <laughs> he's just happy shane patty's day here's a boomer them out you know uh yeah yeah, I just wanted to get to like a, a misdemeanor level of mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, we ended up at this but house yeah. with this bluegrass band, and I was like drunk enough where I'm like singing bluegrass with them. And there's this one guy who's really drunk who just is like trolling the band. Like he has a guitar. Yeah. And I've never, actually, I think I have seen people do this before when he's just really drunk. And instead of like playing, or he just is going, Dude, I've seen guys do that at karaoke for no reason. They get so hammered. Yeah, he just kept wailing on the guitar. And like at one point, I like took him and steered him like out of the room <laughs> and closed him in another room. Wow. And then, yeah, it was like, it was, I, it was like a real life troll. Do you know what the name of the bluegrass band was? No, I think they were just like some neighbors and friends that played okay. music together or something. Because I got a but... couple of friends. My buddy Joey lives out there, plays banjo. And uh, there's several bluegrass bands out of Wichita now. Yeah, I think there was a guy on a bass and then a like an upright bass and then somebody tattoos, maybe a violin or something. I, you yeah. know, I don't know. It was six in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> we were still trying to get rid of jars of boomers. Yeah, we were trying to offload the fucking spores that we had. Yeah. So. And then, uh, yeah, this guy was going to put us up, but we kept just partying later and later. And I felt so bad because he was like, you guys got to, you guys can stay here. But, and he's like the comedy dad of the scene (laughs) or whatever. And he's like, you guys can stay here, but you got to be up by 10. And then all of a sudden it's like 6 a.m. And I'm like, like, oh, fuck. Like, I I offered this room up last night. It's tomorrow. No, I was, uh, Meg was nice enough to let us stay there because I was just like, can we please just sleep on your couches? Because we had all our shit with, she'd been like driving us around yeah. with all our shit so that it didn't get <laughs> stolen out of the car. And like, I don't know. It was a, yeah, it was a fun, fun night. But uh, yeah, I feel bad about uh, Comedy Dad. Uh, shout out to Comedy Dad, uh, Dan Lane, I think. Is that his name? For uh, offering to put us know. up. We, we never met him. Yeah. I'm sorry. Come to Denver. I'll take you out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I, mushroom I feel, pizza i feel bad that you uh made it, he made accommodations for us and we just yeah it got to a point where it just didn't work yeah it's my only regret of the whole tour sorry dan not, not hanging out sorry dad dan oh dan i thought you kept calling him <laughs> I, thought, I thought you kept calling him dad i was like sorry dad yeah no i think it, yeah i think his name is dan but uh yeah sorry dan mm, dan the man yeah then i got i got to pee real quick yeah, then we pretty much uh, drove our happy asses back to Colorado. All right. What'd you work on at five this morning? Bert Bert's, uh, works on the the pictures. In uh, I work in, I work in the talking pictures in in the New York City in the moving pictures and uh, yeah. So lately, uh, the last I don't know four days, I've been working on uh, the Joker sequel. Whoa! Oh wow! Uh, That's the cool. To the Joaquin Phoenix. Joker, yeah, with with Lady Gaga uh, as Harley Quinn. Oh wow! But uh, we were filming in uh, in the New York Supreme Court courthouse, or uh, on the front steps of it, anyway. And uh, uh, while filming the Joker, I found uh, stashed away, clearly like purposely set somewhere on a little drain pipe in the corner, uh, a butterfly knife. Whoa! 
Yeah. And I totally thought for some reason, though, I was like, oh, when they call me on the computer, I'll whip it out and show it to them. But uh, wait, did you? You kept nope, it. Uh, I forgot. There's no uh, there's no visual here. So I'm just sitting here flipping a butterfly knife out. <laughs> well, you could send us the picture. <laughs> I found the set of Joker. What's that? You could always send us a picture of it. We oh. can post it. Oh, I've got pictures I can send you. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was wild to find too. Also, we're like we the whole time we were filming, we we're on high alert because it's the same courthouse that Trump will be indicted on oh. eventually. Yeah, were there and protests so, going on there? A, well, that's the crazy thing is they they were filming a scene with eight hundred extras. That's the most extras I've ever seen in my life. Eight hundred extras of people like I don't know. I think Joker takes place in the seventies. Yeah, and it's like of people like half the crowd's dressed dressing the Joker and they're cheering for the Joker, and half the people are like, you know, regular humans that want the Joker to, to to get to get the chair, if you will. But like, yeah, we had drills in place in case a bunch of MAGA people showed up. Whoa! And turned it into a riot, which thankfully didn't happen. But dude, that's insane. Uh, Fox News was hanging out just waiting for it to happen. Yeah. Yeah, they probably put the knife there. Well, what I heard is the protest that did happen was mostly people being like. Lock his ass up. He did crimes. <laughs> you know, the exact opposite of what he thought would happen. But, yeah, yeah, I think after January 6th and all those people going to jail, I don't think his supporters are so keen to show up to his uh, events Walking. where he's, like, <laughs> <laughs> his uh, violent rhetoric, but whatever. No. Yeah, no, I heard, I heard a lot of people were just kind of like – worried that Trump shit was going to be a setup. And also, he, did, he never got indicted either. So it was kind of stupid. Well, he, still, he still hasn't been indicted yet. He still could be, yeah, but I don't know. Maybe yeah. they'll wait until like, after like, he loses the presidency again. I don't know. Holy Maybe, fuck, know. dude. Like, when he said, I'll be indicted Tuesday, like, all these legal experts came out and they're like, it's very unlikely that'll happen. I don't know why he's saying this. So have like you Trump was calling for protests? Have you looked up the XOX on that knife and seen like what it means? No, <laughs> that's wild. No, does that mean something? I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, so they just got the picture of this knife that I sent them. Uh, XOXO. It means hugs and kisses. Yeah. <laughs> I can see the Joker sporting a yeah butterfly knife that says hugs and kisses. Yeah, it does mean hugs and kisses. I guess. If you're not down to hug and kiss, you got to get stabbed. The X represents a kiss, and the O represents a hug. Okay, so I found this this uh, knife. It's a GBS 38. Oh, you actually found the kiss knife? Kiss this butterfly knife. What's it valued at? We can we can get this going on a... Uh... Ooh, do you know what I can get one for? This one looks even nicer. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a $27.85 knife you got yourself there. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. So the fact that I got it on the Joker set, I feel like says a lot. That's well, pretty cool. The value. I think it's yeah. weird that it was hidden by the Supreme Court, though. So part of me's like wonders if there's gonna be some guy that's like, I, I have this very carefully planned out assassination <laughs> attempt, and then he was like going to like execute it, and he's like, God damn it, somebody took my knife. Yeah. <laughs> damn you, New York City. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going back. Someone stole my secret knife. God yeah. damn it, New York. I well, do I do like the idea of a guy and, and his lawyer walking in to be prosecuted or something. He goes, oh, God, hold on. Let me just, I, I forgot something. So, Brett. Well, there's like airport level security to get in there. Like, I, I, I used their bathroom at one point and just like, I, I was surprised how many knives I had on me. Like, <laughs> they were like, no knives. And I was like, I don't have any knives. And then it turned out I had like four knives on me. Including one butterfly knife. Well, those are illegal <laughs> you know, in New York what? City, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, well, the butterfly knife, like, I actually took out of my pocket before I went in being like, I'm not going to bring this into the court courthouse. There's a reason someone didn't bring it into the courthouse. And I walked in with, right. <laughs> with three other knives. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's what I think is the more likely scenario, is that somebody was like, I got to go into the courthouse. Fuck. Uh, I got my hugs yeah. and kisses butterfly yeah. knife on me. So then they then they hid their butterfly knife and they went into that courthouse and the courthouse was like, you're going to jail, motherfucker. You ain't ever coming out. And he's like, but my hugs and kisses you're butterfly gonna, get, knife. And they're you're like, going to get plenty of hugs and kisses in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're going to call you butterfly. Open you up. <laughs> going to spread your wings and fly. <laughs> <laughs> So, Bert, uh, when know, was the first... Some bald idiot with a weird eye is going to find my knife, and he won't treat it right. So. Yeah. Oil it up, weird man. And here I am. Does your head get really I hot, on Bert? On podcast, just snapping it out. Does your head get really What's hot? That? What? No. Oh, I was just... Why I get hot? Because you don't have any hair. 
I I read an article like today you, wait, that says like Napoleon Dynamite. No, so think about how weird it is that us human beings we don't have hair really thick anywhere other than on our our melon and our assholes and our dicks. I'm kidding. It's a, but. <laughs> Our heads specifically. Yeah. And science has done some research, and it turns out that why we have all this hair on our heads is because it helps keep our old brain box cool. Oh, because when it's short, maybe it'll lock in heat? Well, and curly hair helps cool because when you sweat, it keeps the sweat kind of on your brain and then allows your, you know, Ah. helps cool your melon. Huh. So I just wondered, because we have all types of hair here. Yeah. You know, like- in the summer when Bert's like, it's hot, like I should probably take him more seriously, you know, because his his brain could overheat cool down. quicker. Are you a sweater, Brett? Do you sweat a lot? Uh, I mean, I do in New York. Okay. Yeah, but everybody does I, in I the do, big city. I, I don't, yeah, I don't handle humidity well, but... Yeah, yeah. New York in July is a very sweaty place. Yeah, I've heard the open mics there it's can be gross. It's fucking hell. It's absolute hell. Yeah, it's brutal. Uh, but no, like... In Colorado, I think I sweat less than the average person. Yeah, the, I mean, the arid climate here, I'm just, like, I'm a puddler. Like, especially when I grew up in Kansas, I would just flop sweat. Like, skateboarding or something like that. Anything I did active, like, I would just a profuse sweater. Do we have some time to maybe figure out if Bert's a hippie or not? Or are we going to have to extend this for another goddamn <laughs> Is this episode? just going to become a bit now? <laughs> <laughs> Is Brett a hippie or not hippie? Hey, I got to go. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like Jimmy Kimmel running out of time for Matt Damon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, but. Brett, that just means we'll have to have you on again. <laughs> we'll never know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, think, I think I know. I spent a long time in a car with you over the last few weeks. So I think I have the a audience good... is uh, starting to make decisions. They're like, I don't know. He seems nice, but he's got a knife now. Yeah, the knife definitely doesn't help your case. <laughs> the hugs and yeah, kisses, butterfly, butterfly knife. knife. But it is a loving, <laughs> a loving knife. Yeah, the, the hugs and kisses part yeah. is very good. <laughs> well, and I like that you had to smuggle that home on the train. Yeah. That mountain man Bert yeah. had to break because that oh. knife's not legal. Is it? It's not legal in New if, York. At if all. they would have stopped and frisked old Bert on the train, he what could you have gotten for that? Like, would the mushrooms in Kansas oh. have been worse, or the knife on the train? Mushrooms in Kansas for sure, but is I it, still could have gotten in a lot of trouble. Also, is it illegal like, because why, it's, you ever thought about it? Exactly. Why are butterfly knives and switchblades illegal, but a, another knife of the same length is not? Right. Well, also like uh, like a Crenshaw. Just, or something that has that little trigger flip that comes open even quicker than a butterfly. Yeah. 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 I think it's just intimidation factor. Yeah. It's like Like the nunch. Or something that like, well, it's like a nunch. You pull the blade out, you do it in front of someone. Here's the thing with the wallet, a switchblade and a butterfly knife is, yeah. Are you using that butterfly knife to do knife things around the house? I feel like it's a knife with a purpose. It's like an assault knife. Yeah, it's like a... As opposed to an assault rifle. Like, its purpose is to fucking stab and hurt people. Yeah, It'd be like if you're carrying a... Is it called a scythe? Same thing with a switchblade. Like, who the fuck uses a switchblade... To whittle with. You know, like, yeah. that's that's a fucking... Those are fighting knives, right? You, which one do you think is more dangerous? There's, switchblade or a butterfly? Butterfly. I, a switchblade is a really shitty knife, typically. Yeah, but it's quick. You hit the trigger, stab. I feel like with a butterfly knife, yeah. every person is going to do their show before they actually stab See, you. They're doing I, that. Ch- 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 you could just kick them real quick. When I think of a switchblade, I think of like that weird like shaving kind of knife. Oh. Shaving knife? Okay. A straight razor? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to go back to like, what was that? Uh, God, the, the Outsiders? But yeah, same thing with the switchblade. Like that, the, it's a stabbing knife. Yeah, well, it was a like a was it called a greaser? Like the greaser knives? Like whatever that was back in the fifties. I don't think you can say that anymore. No. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's it like a slur. <laughs> it's, a, it's a greaser a slur. <laughs> uh, the greaser knives. No, they, <laughs> the greaser knives. <laughs> it is now slur for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for mechanics. I don't think greaser that. knives. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I use to get an oil filter off. But yeah, uh, you got anything you need to plug, Bert? Uh, yeah, I'm at the uh, I'm at the Graham for 
a comedy show called Just Come on uh, on Tuesday nights of this week. Just come, why uh, don't you? Yeah, June just night. come to the come. Joe. How do just they spell come. it? Uh, they they spell it the uh, the the PG way. Okay, uh, but don't there, go. There a lot of Never mind. Stuff. Don't go. It's <laughs> not just cool. Come. It's There's not less cool. sticky than you thought. There used to be a show in New York called uh, There Was More People Here Last Week. <laughs> what a great that name! A or like, show, you should have been here back, last week. Yeah, it was such like a back of the room joke, though. It's kind of yeah. like that's just what comics say to each other a long time. Yeah. But uh, then on Thursday, I'm doing Union Hall. I'm opening for uh, for so this 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 new up and comer named Sam Talent. Sammy T. <clears throat> and uh, never heard of him. Yeah, I think he's some sort of ventriloquist comic. But yeah, I don't know. He just he seems like he's got potential. Wow. I heard he's a sound effects guy. Yeah. Doing the, I'm, act, I'm actually sitting in a room full of uh, full of two of his suitcases, so I assume one's full of props. Oh yeah, he's got the Jeff Dunham suitcase. Yeah, <laughs> I hear I hear muffled sounds coming from one yeah. of them, so that's probably what. Well, yeah, <laughs> go to the go to that one. Begging for air. Go to that one instead of the one that spells yeah. "come" wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come, just come. Uh, last Thursday night, so I can do both. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, mean, if you're come, a hardcore hiker, by, uh, right? If you're a hardcore uh, just, it's, it's mountaineer, good friend, the Nalawi Bangist. Oh yeah, just come is. Yeah. Oh, just all right. Come, yeah. Well, then go to that one too. I like yeah. Nalawi. Yeah. Yeah. Good dude. I'm gonna uh, have to and tell. Other than that, I will be on the Joker sequel uh, with a knife. A lot. Uh, yeah. And uh, I wish I could give you some details of where I'll be, but I signed an NDA. Yeah. So. I like the idea of going, luck, I'll be on shoot. And if you yeah. want your knife back, come and get it. I like how you already told us that oh, there's a scene yeah. with 800 extras and some of them are dressed like him and some yeah. of them are not. And some of them are rooting for him to be released. But that's not a spoiler at all. Oh, damn it. I did no. that, didn't I? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That was the Trump protest. <laughs> that's Trump protest. Yeah. <laughs> some were dressed like I, him. I and- thought about it. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be a drastically different crowd than a MAGA protest. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Hiker. Yeah. I, for... don't, I don't think I spoiled too much with that detail. There's so much paparazzi around. There's, I've already seen a bunch of pictures in the press of uh, of these crowds in front of the courthouse. It was a pretty difficult scene to, to keep under wraps. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure <laughs> one of the 800 extras has talked about it on a podcast by yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So... No, that's exciting. Joker 2 coming. Um, yeah. Man, I thought the first one was okay. So hopefully they do better on the second one. <laughs> I like the story. It was definitely dark. I went to the London. I went and I saw it in the theater. the first one was mediocre. Yeah. So hopefully it's better. I don't know. Yeah. There's the, there's the other villain in it in the end, right? Doesn't he make a friend in the jail cell? I can't keep my Batmans separated no, that's, anymore. That's, that's Harley that's Quinn, right? Batman. Oh, is it Batman? Uh, well, Lady Gaga is playing Harley Quinn. Yeah. And there will be musical numbers in it, in this. I, I know I'm not spoiling anything with that because that's public knowledge. Well, yeah, you don't get the Gaga unless you're going to do a little sing song. Yeah. So You got to sing with the Gaga or you get the Nana. All right. I think we're out of steam. Uh, all right well thanks so much for listening everybody yeah thanks for taking the time brett Uh, yeah i'd love to stick around longer but i've got a butterfly knife to play with yeah (laughs) yeah we'll have you on in a few weeks when you're known as nine finger bert yeah (laughs) (laughs) old one thumb yeah yeah, dude, I'll be lucky to have more than seven at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Old six finger Bert. Yeah. <clears throat> He's just got a thumb. Yeah. What's weird is is he lost him one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> He's just that addicted to the knife. <laughs> he loves the blade that going. much. <laughs> He's just kept a slicing, kept a cutting. Now training to flip flop with that one thumb. All right. We'll see you next week. Make sure and get on the, the motherfucking, motherfucking bus. bus. Ha, 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 ha.